Hello, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com. I've got a video for you today looking at colour in Cubase 7. Uh, specifically, we're looking at colour in Cubase 704 onwards uh, because that release added some features to the colour set that were previously uh, not available in the early releases of Cubase 7. So a few weeks ago, I did a video on colour in Cubase 6.5 and what I'm going to do is look at the differences in Cubase 7 and Cubase 6.5. I'm not going to run through all of the colouring details again. What I'm also not going to do is show you how I've set up the colours um, because this is now my default setup for Cubase. Um, what I'm going to do is show you some of the uh, features that uh, have come about in Cubase 7 and how I've set them up. Uh, but I'm not actually going to be doing any of the setting up in this video. All of the changes lie in the preferences, so we'll just go straight in and have a look at what we've got. Um, okay, and we've got all the colours up at the top. Cubase 7 as it ships comes with a whole bunch of dark colours. Um, and one of the first things I did was work out how to make everything a little bit lighter. Um, so what you've got here is an opportunity to make the desktop a lot lighter, and that's what this colour is here. And also the overall feel of the theme. Believe it or not, this colour is what influences these colours here and the colour of the mix console. Um, they're fairly dark, and if you give them a light colour, you get a fairly varied set of shades. Um, you would think it would all suddenly go ping and it would be a nice bright blue um, but that's not the case you get the nice Manchester City blue here and you get varying shades of darker colours throughout the next thing you can set is the track type defaults uh, so that when you create a new track in the project it takes those colours and what I've done here is I've created a few tracks so you can see how that looks in practice. So over here we've got a bass guitar track which has picked up the instrument coloration. Um, if you create an audio track it picks up that color. Group channels naturally go to that color. Effects to that. Now interestingly, if you create a MIDI instrument from the VST instrument rack, which is up here, I'm going to just Turn that off and go back to there a minute. If you create a VST instrument, as I have for this FM8 here, it creates one MIDI track. When it asks you if you wanted to create a MIDI track, and it does create one MIDI track, but when it actually creates the instrument track associated with the instrument, it doesn't create it as in the instrument coloration. It goes for the other color. Truly bizarre. The project work area and grid are set from here, and you also can set the same for the editors. The cycle color is the color that gets overlaid um, when you set the cycle markers. So if I pull that out, there it is in a fetching shade of light blue. Try to keep the theme fairly innocuous. But if I was to go for something a bit more dramatic, say, uh, let's just bung it to red and I'm done with it. As you can see in the background, it's now gone to that still transparent shade of red. So we'll go back in and it remains where we are. So I'll put it back to, uh, it was blue, wasn't it? Yeah, so I'll go for a nice shade of blue. As you can see, to alter the colours, all you have to do is click on the box you want to change, and then you've got all these different controls whereby you can alter the colour. As I said, that's the same for the editor. Now, think back to Cubase 6.5. In 6.5, all we could do in terms of the faders was alter the intensity of the colours. We couldn't edit the colours that the faders actually had. 
Well, back in Cubase 7, you've guessed it, oh, we can reconfigure them all. And here we have them. And this is what it looks like in practice. What I've got here is a mixer with some of the fader channels set up. We've got a MIDI channel, we've got an instrument channel, we've got input, group channels, effects channels, the output channel, all of which are set up. And then if we go back into preferences, there they all are, all set up. Next one is a little bit pointless. This is the appearance of the mix console racks, which all sounds well and good until you realize that what they actually are, it's here. It's these colors here, and it's the only place, as far as I can tell, that they actually appear in Cubase. So you can change the color of these little dots. Ipikaye. So that was the mix console racks. The mix console channel strip, you can also change the colors of the individual components of the channel strip. So that sits, if we just go back into the mixer, that sits here in the strip. And as you add them in or take them out, you can see the colors come up. It doesn't, as far as I'm aware, affect the color of the controls. It just affects the color of this little label here. So if you have a burning desire to change that colour scheme to something else, well, there you go. That's where you do it. Back into preferences. Right. So that's those. Um, there are two other places where you can change. One is the event display for tracks, where you can colorize the track by using this fader here. If I just slide that across and apply it, you will see that the tracks pick up the color they've been given. So you can have a much more colorful set of track controls, uh, a la Pro Tools. Or you can just take it back down to that. The only thing with this is it colorizes everything. If I apply it at full strength, you'll see that all the buttons become colorized. Whether you like this or not is a matter of personal preference. Personally, I like to be sure that I can see what's going on. So I don't know that I'll be using that facility. So we apply that, take that away. It looks nice though. And finally, the other one is meters. We did look at metering in the previous video, and it's not that different in terms of how you add and change the colors. What is different is that you can change the color of the master meter and the channel meter independently. So here I've got the channel set up so that as soon as it starts to go above zero, it goes a very alerting shade of red. Whereas on the master meter, where it can't go above zero, it just goes yellow once it gets above 6 dB. And that's it. That's colour in Cubase 7. And uh, next time we'll have a look at something a little more musical. Until then, take care of yourselves. <laughs>